when you get to your campsite, uh, position the trailer in a place where it is even, using these bubble levels. So there's one on the front. Using the level on the side, what you're going to want to do is place the brick below the jack here and lower it down. As you come down, it's going to put more weight on the front and the weight will come off the wheel and be more on the brick. You continue to do that, go back and forth and check until you're nice and low. If you're unable to get level, by finding level ground, what you can do is use the easy leveler to put the device under one tire and lift it up until this bubble is right in the middle. Lower the leveler completely, slide it under the tire, then simply raise. The tire until you are level on the front. This also acts as a wheel shock to prevent rolling. Now chalk the wheel to ensure no rolling motion is allowed. Then grab the crank and after finding level ground, lower the rear stabilizers. Next, go to all four corners, remove the four clips, and release the clasps. It is very important that you do not attempt to raise the trailer roof without releasing these clasps first. Insert the crank into the slot located on the tongue and begin rotating in a clockwise motion. Continue cranking until the trailer roof is raised. Use slow but steady motion to get it all the way up. Once you experience resistance, don't force it, you've reached the top. Next, grab the support poles for the beds off of each bunk. It's always a good idea to mark these so you know exactly where they go. Refer to these markings for placement. For the rear bunks, place the L-clip into the slot on the back, then place the straight slot into the bumper. Repeat this process with the second brace. The straight slot goes into the bumper and the L slot goes into the back just below the bunk. Then locate the pull string, sometimes it's tucked inside. Firmly but gently pull on the bunk. If you notice any obstructions or if it's not coming cleanly, don't force it, let it come on its own. If you need to, stop and check for obstructions. After pulling it out, make sure that the white blocks underneath the bunk line up with the edge of the rods. Using the exact same method as before, insert the front support rods. Then, find the loop to pull. It might be tucked in. As with the rear bunk, always use gentle but firm pulling motion. And remember, the universal rule when dealing with anything that moves on a tent trailer is never force it. Always stop and find out what might be obstructing. You don't want to tear your canvas. Take the additional front braces, place the flat slot into the tongue, and the other end up into the circular slots on the underside of the camper. This is meant to accommodate the additional sleeping capacity of the front bunk, 200 extra pounds. Before you enter the unit, make sure you grab these two channel blocks. Take the tapered one and stick it up there. And then pop it into place over the bar and do the same on the other side. Stick the tape right up inside. And there we go. And pop it onto the bar. These are for your, for your own safety. Do not enter the camper without these being in once you're inside, it is a lot easier to lower the zipped parts than from the outside. So zip up the two side zippers. Then 
the three side zippers. And then you're ready to push the box. Throw that out there. Let's grab a straight end of this bowl. <laughs> Stick it in here. Then lift it up and clip it into the outermost clip. And repeat for the other side. The last step of setup is the door. Uh, keep a hand on there and as you twist these, they will come down, so make sure you're being very careful. And as it comes down, uh, it has a hinge up here. And what you're going to want to do is fit the door into its proper place. Now you might need two people to do this. If you can get it lined up properly and you're nice and even, you can do it with one. Once you have it in there, then you lock the top in place. And Velcro the sides. The door has a lock, but we do not have a key for it. Because I feel like this might circumvent that pretty easily. But once you have it on there and you have it latched up, you can unlatch it here, use the door, and voila! Screened windows if you want to do it that way. The next step is to go around and uh, secure the canvas under each bunk. There are several places to clip the rope onto the underside of the canvas. This of course helps keep the weather out. <laughs> Additionally, make sure the Velcro is connected down around each of the lifting bars. You'll definitely want to keep the elements off of those. As well, go around and Velcro any spots that haven't yet been connected. Really, you're keeping the weather and the bugs out and the comfort in. The dinette. Slide it goes back. There you are. Table is Velcroed down. Simply lift. sit down in between the table, like so. To use the stove outside, uh, let the roof dangle below. There are two clips on the back. They slide onto the holders there. Open this, pull out your gas line, push it in. Until the sleeve comes forward. So you gotta give it a little bit of muscle and spin it. Uh, this is your gas shutoff. Uh, when you use give it in that position, when you use it, slide it forward. You'll have to turn the propane on at the front. Before you start cooking, make sure you put the brace on by feeding it up into the slot on the bottom of the stove, and then just lift up slightly, push it down in there. And now you're cooking with fire. As a general rule, ensure the crank, hardware, and anything that goes with setup and teardown is placed in the cupboard directly inside the door. This is because it's accessible even when the trailer is down. To use the outside stove, turn on the propane tank, turn the valve to the inline position, turn the heat to high, and use matches or lighter to start.
When finished cooking, turn off the heat and turn off the valve below. All right, so to get the propane appliances started, that is your fridge and your furnace, uh, switch this knob to high and turn on 12 volt power, not uh, shore power. Even if you have shore power available, turn that off, turn on 12 volt. Uh, push this down and keep it uh, pressed while at the same time starting. Uh, after some time, uh, two or three times, if you have everything uh, working the way it should, uh, you'll be able to lift this up here and see a pilot light, although in the daytime it's hard to see. Uh, another way to know if it's worked is, um, again, follow those steps and then uh, keep high held for a few seconds, let go, uh, go walk around, do something, uh, come back in about three or five minutes and you can put your hand here very carefully because it can get hot. And if it's starting to get warm, then you know uh, the system is up and running. Back here uh, is your, uh, your fridge temperature. Please leave that at five because uh, that will keep things cold. It does take a while to get started, but uh, if you leave it at five, uh, it'll be a nice temperature. Things will be nice and cold, but they won't freeze over on you. All right, once you get it started, you can come in here and on the very bottom, there is a switch here. It says off that way, that way. So you flick that over this way and you set your temperature above. It might take a few moments, but if you do it right, you'll hear a fan blowing from the furnace vent over here. And you can even feel some air coming through. It will take some time, but this fridge will cool down as well. It can take a few hours to get cold, but these fins back here will start cooling off uh, and keep everything in here quite cold, actually. So. so on the side of the camper here, you can open this. Please only put potable water in, meaning drinking water. Uh, fill it up. And then from the inside, you can use the hand pump over the sink to pump water. Uh, please remember that it does drain. And when it drains out, we want to make sure that we're not spilling pollutants and suds into the, well, the nature around us. So uh, if you're going to use soap, make sure you're connected to a proper campground uh, outlet. Otherwise, uh, just use water and then let the water dump down wherever you want to put it. So when you're done your camping uh, trip and it's time to head home, what you'll want to do is turn your fridge and propane to off, your fridge and furnace to off using this knob and switch off 12 volt to save the battery. And always make sure you turn off the propane source at the source. Okay, putting away the stove is the opposite of what you did to put it on. Go down below and push this sleeve off. Sometimes you need two hands to do it. Propane, make sure it's still in the off position and tuck it back inside, close the latch. Uh, this lift up on the stove, remove the brace. Up top, fold up the side to top, close it, and simply lift it off the side of the camper. It's then ready to be put away under the table. All right, to collapse the table, uh, flip it over, give the braces a little, little smack, and then you bring them down. Bring down uh, the one, uh, I guess, away from the Velcro first. So you can Velcro this strap in place and have it locked up so it doesn't fall down. If your ledge is there, slide it back into place and let it fall. And you'll know it's in the right spot if you give it a little lift and you can hear the Velcro. Then, Pull the cushions down, and there you have it. Place the stove and its brace underneath the table so it doesn't slide around. Making sure that uh, the sink has been drained of all fluids. Uh, flip it over. Never lift the sink from the hand pump. And flip it down like so. Always make sure that the vent is closed. 
And once you have all the windows zipped up and in place, uh, the next step, uh, the first step of the actual bringing everything down would be to put the door back in its place up against the ceiling. I guess the first step would be to make sure you have your window coverings back in the full and upright locked positions. There we go. Uh, unhook the latch here, so that lets the uh, uh, top part of the door operate separately. Um, close the door completely and latch it on the side here. Then up here, release these latches. Uh, remove all the Velcro holding the sides of the doors in place on the inside and outside. And you should be able to pop this top part out and lift the door up. You then basically pull the door upward to its locked position. Lock the two latches and it's in place. Okay, the next step is to unzip all of the previously zipped <laughs> sides. And you can open up some of these uh, coverings for the lift units there. You can un unvelcro the sides there. There are only three zippers. This, this that section actually doesn't have a zipper, so there's one on this side and then two on the other side. All right, so the next step is to remove the, uh, the posts, from the, the braces from the top and let it sit down. Uh, pull the extension out and just lay it on the, the bed as such. And do the same on the other side. Once you're outside, uh, make sure you remove the tied down pieces underneath each of the butts. And again, make sure that all the Velcro has kind of been released. That before you try to lower this, or even before you try to slide in the bunks, you remove safety bars that we put in when we brought it, put it up. So stick it on there a little tight. Simply remove them and place them back in the cab. All right, the first step is to kind of lean under here, lift up the bunk, and get these two braces that come from the trunk, the tongue, uh, at that point, you're ready to kind of untuck lightly all the canvas around the bunk and give it a push in. You then remove these two braces and set them aside. Okay, on this side, there's a the braces are not there, so all we have a little uh, lift. There we go. Lift and push. Remember, if you notice any resistance as you're pushing it in, uh, always stop. Uh, in this case, we've got a little bit of bunched up material. We don't want to damage the canvas, so we'll pull it out again. And we'll do the same thing that we did before. Make sure that everything is untucked from below and we'll push it in. On this Nothing side, tucked up underneath, we'll try it again. And again, the key word here is to never force it. A little lift, push in. It should go in fairly easily. Without forcing. Once you get it past this, this point, lift and pop off the braces. Take the braces that you use for each bunk and place them on top of each bunk, not stacked on top of each other flat. This way, the next person who uses the camper has a better idea of which brackets go exactly where. Okay, in pre preparation for lowering the roof, uh, come to this side, well, I guess both sides, but we'll do one side first and push the canvas deep in. And take 
excess and as neatly as possible pull it over kind of tuck it underneath you'll have to do this as it comes down as well but the idea is that we don't have a big bunched up piece of fabric but instead we have nicely folded fabric Okay, so we're going to reach inside and because we put everything in that nice cubby hole that's close to the door, nothing is ever out of reach. Remove the tools we're going to need to put it all back together. We have the clips, the crank, and the uh, ratchet for the lifter. Insert it and down is this way. So we will very slowly start to lower it. Keeping an eye on it to make sure that it is indeed coming down. If at any point you're turning it and it's not lowering, stop. Make sure you took out those safety guards. Make sure there's nothing obstructing it. Okay. And then take some time to go around. Re, uh, pull in all this Excess fabric, canvas. Pushing it as deep as it'll go. Try to fold it as nice as you can. And then we continue lowering it once again. Okay. As you get uh, about halfway down from where you were, stop and do it again. Go through, tuck all the fabric underneath, walk around, make sure it's all clear, bring it down again. And before you get it all the way closed, walk around, make sure that things are not hanging out. Anything that could be pinched, Give it an extra tuck. We do not want to have any pinches or tears occurring because we didn't do a last loop around. See, you have to make sure you're walking around. I would have missed that. So tuck it back underneath. Make sure the side looks pretty good, but not up here. See this? We got to make sure this is going under and not in between. We'll then bring it down the rest of the way. Now, what you're going to see, you'll see this line get slack. Once this line gets slack, stop cranking. It's not going to pull it down anymore. The rest has to be done by hand. So you come around and you give it a little bit of, a little bit of muscle, gentle but firm, and you start lowering it so you can get these clasps ah, there we go over each corner uh, that means it's down as far as it needs to be do all four lock them all in place with the clips and that's the lowering part of the procedure complete make sure you lock each clip in place using the locking pins you get it all down latched up the last thing you want to do is uh, move this to the up position so you hear just a couple clicks and that you can see there's no slack on this cable. You don't want that waving and flopping against the ground. So give it a little bit of a tightness, not too much, just a couple. And you can raise your levelers or your rear leveling jacks with it. And while making sure the other side is still chalked so there's no rolling, uh, you can use the ratchet wrench to lower the wheel lifter. And slide it out. Gently put it away, keeping in mind not to scratch the floors. And at this point, you should be ready to hook up to your vehicle and or already hooked up to your vehicle always make sure you don't forget this uh, if you don't have this you're not going to have a fun time camping because you kind of need it to do everything 
put it back in that convenient spot right near this door, along with the ratchet wrench, and close her up. And that's really all there is to it. Enjoy your camping adventure with your Epic 1706.